just even fellowship and celebrate, you know, what God's done in the life of the Williams. And so I want to say a lot more about that even during the service time. And and uh, but I'm glad it worked out when I called uh, Brother Joseph. You know, I said, no, I just come down and and uh, do this part. He said, well, why don't you teach Sunday school and <laughs> and preach? And and I said, well, I, I don't want to. <laughs> I didn't want to invite myself to come and do that, but I was definitely glad uh, to get to do so. And uh, let me just say right here that Southwest Baptist Church in Oklahoma City uh, just thinks the world of the Williams, um, the Bob and Miss Calla. Um, they were the very first missionaries sent out from Southwest uh, 50 years ago. Wow. So that certainly ought to be celebrated. Praise the Lord. Right? Isn't that a blessing? I love it. And uh, so many, you know, there at Southwest were there at the same time and have fond memories, you know, of them. And, and uh, of course, Brother Bert Harrison was their sitting pastor. And, uh, and Miss Irma just just went home to be at the Lord. Yeah, just just about, what was it, Angie? Uh, back in May, I think it was. And uh, 96 years old she was. And uh, still just quite a lady, you know, and so y'all had, had some good training in those years, you really did, where you went out, so I'm thankful for that, well, I'm glad to get to be here with you, I wanted to do some teaching on the, on, on just really, in light of uh, what we're celebrating here today, um, about the local church here in the Sunday School Hour, and, um, and then a little different direction during the, during the morning service, so join me in uh, Matthew chapter 10, let's look at some scripture here together, Matthew chapter number 10, and then uh, we'll get a few other passages together here this morning, and then we'll, uh, we'll get, get to going uh, there on that. But Matthew chapter number 10, and, uh, and then we'll, go, we'll jump over to Mark chapter number 3 just for a brief moment. <clears throat> All right. Good to see everybody again. Uh, the Baba is just telling your son, it seemed like yesterday, that we were celebrating your 40th uh, anniversary. And um, just yesterday was 10 years ago. So that's that's kind of hard to believe. So. The older you get, the worse that gets. Is this, is this going to get worse for the Baba? I, it's bad right now. So I, I don't know what to do about that. Good night. All right. So uh, it says here in verse number 1, when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. And then it names the disciples. I know that you're familiar with them. Uh, the names of the twelve are these, of the apostles are these. The first, Simon, who's called Peter, Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. What a Kind of a quite a group of four guys right there, wasn't it? Yep. Uh, and then it mentions the others: Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew the publican, James the son of Alphaeus, and Labius, whose surname was Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas, who also betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent forth. And commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles. And that, of course, that would come later, right? Mm -hmm. They would go. Yep. But first, uh, they were to go to the Jews, and then also to uh, the Gentiles, and into the city of the Samaritans, and eventually they would go there. But you can see his focus in verse 6. But go, rather, to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay, uh, so you can lose your place there, but go over to Mark chapter number 3. Mark chapter 3. And then we'll make our way actually to Acts <clears throat> chapter 16. So, I'm sorry, chapter 13. Mark chapter 3. And uh, verse 13 says, And he goeth up into a mountain and calleth unto him whom he would, and they came unto him. And he ordained twelve. So this is a parallel passage. He ordained twelve. That Notice the order here. First of all, that they should be with him. And that he might send them forth to preach. And then, then actually you have the list of all their names again. So I love that order, don't you? 
That they might be with Him, and then that He might send them. Amen. Be with them. Be with Him. In fact, I'm getting ready to preach a youth rally in uh, uh, Farmington, New Mexico. So kind of close to where y'all were, right? Yeah. And uh, so Brother Corley is pastoring out there. And they're having a youth conference. And it's called uh, Anywhere With Him. That's the name of the conference. Anywhere With Him. I'll go anywhere with Him. And thankfully, he goes everywhere with us. Right? So, in fact, this is their theme verse. He ordained 12 that they should be with him and that he should send them forth. Okay? All right, uh, join me one more passage. All right, about the time we get there to be maybe the end of Sunday school almost, but uh, we've got a lot of territory, I know, but we're, we're, I'm going somewhere with this. Uh, so, Acts chapter number 13. Acts chapter number 13. <clears throat> so, we're seeing a pattern here that, that the Lord, uh, they prayed, he prayed. He had time with the disciples, and then he sent them out. All right, now look at this in chapter 13. And it says, now there were in the church, uh, by the way, what does the word church mean? Anybody in this Sunday school, so we'll kind of interact a little bit. What, do you, what, do you, what comes to mind when you think about the word church, the definition, what's the word itself mean? Called out assembly. Called out assembly, all right. So he called them out. He called out James and John and Peter and Andrew, called them out. Now, uh, sometimes when I got called out at school, that wasn't always a good thing. <laughs> but uh, here, the Lord called him out. That's a good thing. He's called, he, by the way, he's called you out. Yes. I think about uh, Bob and Callum Williams, how God called you all out. And called you unto himself. Uh, you see the pattern? He called them unto himself. They spent time with him, and then he sent them out. All right? So, a little bit further here. So, a called out assembly that was at Antioch. Certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon is called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene. Okay, so these names are starting to look non-Jewish, aren't they? <laughs> some of them. That's because the Lord was reaching some people. You know. uh, Manian, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. And notice this. <coughs> as they ministered to the Lord and what? Fasted. Not the favorite Baptist word, right? But necessary. And fasted. The Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. Notice this. So they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia. And then from thence they went. Um, you know, to Salamis, and then all these other places. Okay, so uh, here, just during this Sunday school hour, I, I wanted to, to kind of get us started on this, this part of the day in talking about this, the extraordinary assembly of ordinary people. The extraordinary, extraordinary assembly of this just ordinary people. Abraham Lincoln said this. He said, God must love the common man. He sure made a bunch of them. Isn't that good? God must love the common man. He sure made a bunch of them. Well, you know, um, tying this in together here, <clears throat> this past November, Southwest Baptist Church in Oklahoma City uh, celebrated 70 years. 1951, a small group of, uh, I'm going to say it this way, not, not, I don't think you'll take it as a, Put anybody down, just ordinary people. Began to meet in a home, and then they found a storefront to meet in, and their very far first pastor was a missionary. He'd just come off the field, J. Oscar Wells. Uh, actually, he was uh, in China, and a prisoner of war and everything, and so it's an interesting story there, but he was the very first pastor of Southwest Baptist Church, and then O.E. Matthews became pastor, and then after that, Bert Harrison, and there's there's a couple before of the Matthews, but anyway, 70 years ago, 70 years ago, just a group of ordinary people on the north side of Oklahoma City uh, got concerned about the people on the south side of Oklahoma City. You know there's a north and south in Oklahoma City, right? The river divides us, right? Just like a church, you got the east and the west side, right? The, the two don't always mix, right? Um, but anyways, they got concerned and they started a church 70 years ago. Well, that had an impact on the life of Bob Calloway. I'm thankful for that. And 50 years ago, 
God called them into the ministry, and we'll cover a little bit more of that territory during the morning service. Um, but you know who God calls? Just ordinary people. That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Just ordinary people. Uh, Brother Bob, mm -hmm. I, I love how that you sign your letters. Folks, we appreciate uh, what you do, you know, and I love that, you know, just folks. <laughs> That's awesome. Folks, that, he's speaking my language when he says that up <laughs> in Kentucky, you know, folks. <laughs> uh, hey, you know what, folks? <laughs> We're just all ordinary people. That's right. But here's the deal. We all get to be a part of extraordinary assemblies. You know, every every church that is indeed his church. And there's a lot of things that out there that have have the name church on it. That's not really his church. Right. Right. You understand that? But every church that is his church, like Choctaw Baptist Church here, and Southwest Baptist Church there, and the church in Swink. Help me out, uh, Swink. Uh, yeah, Choctaw. 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 Okay, Choctaw Baptist. I was kind of going blank there. Mm -hmm. That is his church as well. Those are extraordinary assemblies. You know why they're extraordinary? Because the one who started them. Not, not the man. Not the people. But the fact that it's the Lord's church. That's, that's right. right. That's what makes it extraordinary. That's right. that's right. okay. And uh, so it's extraordinary in its origin. <clears throat> and it's extraordinary in, um, in its very nature. You know, there's a lot of other assemblies. Um, uh, I just, I was sharing uh, with Brother Tommy. <clears throat> He used to be at Southwest Baptist Church. We're glad he's here. <laughs> I, know, I didn't mean that like it sounded. <laughs> we like to pick at each other quite a bit. Yeah, I love it. Man. Just keep it coming, right? Yeah. But, uh, you know, we, I was just sharing with him. I preached up in Camden to Missouri just this past Thursday and tacked on a little extra vacation day. And Angie was in Colorado, so our family was all spread out all over the place. But I had me and my three boys, and we went to... Uh, to a St. Louis Cardinals game, you know, 41,000 people assembled there. You know, that's an assembly. And some would say, well, that's extraordinary. In fact, they, they, we did a little tour of the stadium. They called it a little piece of baseball heaven is what they call it. Well, I'm not sure if I'd go that far. <laughs> um, but anyways, it was quite an assembly, you know, and everybody was gathered together. Well, in a sense, it's extraordinary, but it's not like the Lord's churches. Uh, there's a pep rally assembly at a ball game, you know, a high school, or, you know, you have a board meeting, and that's an assembly. There's all kinds of different assemblies. You know, uh, growing up in Kentucky, we had uh, horse shows, walking horse shows. I've got a cousin that's, that shows uh, Tennessee walking horses, and that's a unique group of people that get together, I guarantee you that, right? Or in Oklahoma City, a lot of the rodeos, that's some unique folks that comes together, and my dad raised me, you know, uh, coon hunting. So you get some coon hunters together. That's a unique group of people, you know, to get together. So there's all kinds of assemblies. But isn't it a blessing to be saved and to get to be a part of one of the Lord's the right. churches? Yes, yes, amen. It's extraordinary. Amen. So here's, here's what I want to challenge us about today. Let's be careful that we don't treat the extraordinary assembly like it's something right. ordinary. Right. Yeah, there you That's go. where churches get in trouble right. is we begin to treat it, well, we can make this change and that change. Uh, no, we better not make this change and that change unless the Lord says for us to make a change. You see, you see what I'm saying? And uh, to have the kind of music that we ought to honor and glorify God, the Word of God, honoring that, honoring His Word, and honoring what He started as a church. We better be careful to honor that because it's His extraordinary assembly. We had a man uh, named Brother Matt Wood. He pastors out in Clovis, New Mexico. And he came to teach at Heartland, or preach rather, at chapel. And he had one of those Rubik cubes. Anybody in here, can you do that? You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You, know what I'm ta you know how to mess them up? <laughs> you know how to fix them? Right? No. <laughs> no. There's no way. My, my son, one of my boys, they can, they can put that thing back together in about, you know, right at a minute and some odd seconds. It's amazing. Now, for me to do that, I have to take the stickers off and put them, you know, <laughs> back that way. Right. But he, he, uh, he had a group of the college students up there, and he handed it to one of those students. I mean, it was just all yellow on one side, orange on one side, green, you know, and so forth. And he said, now, you've been given something that's in perfect shape, okay? 
And then he, he said, but, you know, let's say it gets down the line here, and this individual says, you know, I think I'll make this change. And then somebody says, well, I think I'll make this change. And then somebody else makes this change in it. And then by the time you get down to the end of the line, I mean, it's all scrambled up. But you know what I'm saying is that the Lord has given us His perfect model of what the church is supposed right. to look like. And we're supposed to pass that on down to the next generation yeah. so they can pass it on down to the next generation, to the next generation. And I've got no authority, none of us do, to say, well, I think I'll make this change in Christ Church or this right. change or that change or that change. Hey, we, we just need to pass the truth on down to the next generation. Amen. 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 Right. So let's, let's not treat the Lord's extraordinary assembly like it's something ordinary. You know? And how do we do that? Well... I believe we ought to come to church excited about it and being, being ready to sing and ready to teach and ready to preach and just really ready to engage in the service, you know, and uh, to be tuned in from the very beginning, you know, because, I mean, it, you can be in church and happy at the same time. <laughs> Glory. Amen. That's right. Well, as they gathered together in our text and they were with the Lord, there's the pattern. you got to be with the Lord to be sent by the Lord. And, um, you know, I think about it there, how that they assembled together and the Holy Ghost said, separate me, Paul and Barnabas, for the work whereunto I've called them. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure that church in Antioch would have said, you know, we'd be glad just to keep Paul and Barnabas right here. I, I, I mean, they were doing the work, weren't they? Yes, they were. And, um, but the Holy Spirit said, I want them to go there. Well, I can say this this morning. I'm, I'm glad that we get to have this time in Sunday school. Just kind of, just kind of talk to you a little bit, because I, I I know for sure the folks like Ludie and Beverly Smith and Joy, Bill and Joy Chevron, who just celebrated. So he just turned 80, didn't he? And is that what we just celebrated with Brother Bill or their 60th year? Yeah. So, anyways, but there's a lot of a lot of folks at Southwest Baptist Church that have a lot of longevity there. And, multi-generational families. I'm just simply saying this. Every one of them would have loved for Bob and Cal Williams to stay right there in Oklahoma City. You know? I don't think anybody's ready to run y'all off. <laughs> Isn't that good? I'd be glad to have had them there. But here's what happened. The Holy Spirit of God said, I want, I want to use the Williams in Brazil. And then I want to use them in Washington State and in New Mexico and in, I mean, I, we get this in order right now, but here in Oklahoma, well, you know, I believe the folks here in Idabel and up in Swing and around and out in New Mexico um, and Bethel, Oklahoma, are better. Here's why. Because the Williams were obedient when the Lord said, I want to use you to do my extraordinary work. Now, who does he use? Ordinary. Ordinary people to do his extraordinary work. And here's what we better be careful to do. So, we, number one, we better be careful not to treat his extraordinary assembly like it's ordinary, Amen. because it is the Lord's churches. Amen. And uh, you got to have the authority to go out and start a church, which can only be another church that is his church sending a man out. That's right. Because it's churches that start churches. That's right. You know, what, you know when, when a church begins to go in a different direction, it's when they begin to change their thoughts about what a church is. You know, that's usually where it starts. Um, but you got to have the authority of a church to start a church. For example, I saw my baseball a minute ago. How about I get a group of guys together, get you know a roster of guys, and I buy them all uniforms, and, and uh, I say that we're part of the major leagues. <laughs> I told my guy, son, I said, you know, because we did the tour of the stadium, I'm glad you get to see where I, where I could have played. I just kept playing, you know. He looked at me like, Dad. <laughs> but let's say, you know, man, I really want to be in the major league. So I get all these guys together. We have practice times. And if we get a, we get a bus, we charter a plane even, or what, however far you want to go with it, get a stadium. Well, they're not going to just recognize us as part of the major league just because I say I am. Mm -hmm. There's got to be the authority sure. to do that. That's true. Same, same thing. How about this? Let's say... Um, you know, I want to start a Chick-fil-A, you know, because that's, I mean, that's the, that's, that's the Baptist uh, restaurant, right? I mean, that's, I mean, good conservative. Uh, I remember I was up in Toronto, and they were opening up their very first Chick-fil-A. 
you know. And I mean, there's lines of people all the way out and wrapped around, you know, the the uh, block. And, and of course, the very liberal-minded people in Toronto, Canada, you know. And um, and so they were interviewing all the people that were in line. Are you here because you support traditional marriage between a man and a woman? Or are you here because you support life? You know, because Chick Fil A stands for all those values. Are you here because of all that? And the guy said, oh, I'm just here because I like chicken. <laughs> Let's say I want to start a Chick-fil-A and, you know, and I get a little place and Angie, I mean, really, she can fry some good chicken, you know, and I've got Angie making some chicken and I've got one of the boys dressed up in a, in a cow costume out front and written with bad lettering, you know, that says uh, eat more, eat more uh, chicken, you know, from the cow, you know. Well, I don't have authority to do that. Why? Because it's got to be corporate headquarters so to speak, that's saying you have the authority to start a new Chick-fil-A. All right, watch this. How did Choctaw Baptist Church here in the Idabel area, how did it get in existence? Well, because there's a church in Oklahoma City that said, we'll, we'll be the sending church for the Williams as they come here. Amen. Okay? But where did we get the authority to do that? It goes all the way to heaven. As independent Baptists, that means we don't have a headquarters somewhere else except heaven. So churches start churches that start churches that start churches, that's right. and then it just keeps multiplying, and that's isn't that marvelous? Amen. That's God's extraordinary work through fishermen like Peter and Andrew, mm -hmm. fishermen like James and John, yeah. sons of thunder, yeah. who at one time said, "Lord, let's call thunder down from heaven. You know, let's call <laughs> fire down from heaven," and, and the Lord had to deal with them about that. Right? Just ordinary people. And I'm sure glad God's willing to work with us Amen. using just ordinary people. Amen. So number one, we've got to be careful not to treat the extraordinary assembly like it's something ordinary. And then number two, we better be careful not to treat the ordinary people like they're something extraordinary. Mm -hmm. You follow me? Okay. So don't treat the extraordinary assembly like it's something ordinary. And don't treat the ordinary people like they're something extraordinary. You know, uh, uh, you know, and I, I'm all for college and everything. Went to one, you know, <laughs> and there's one there in, in Oklahoma City. But sometimes we can put too much uh, emphasis on it, and it's you know, it's all about uh, what is it, cum laude, summa cum laude, you know. And then I think, oh, so you got cum laude, summa cum laude, and then laude laude everybody, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what does that really matter, you know? It's just God uses ordinary people, and. Um, to do extraordinary things. It's a beautiful thing when the members of the church come to together under pastoral leadership, pastoral authority, that's under the chief shepherd's authority to do what the Lord wants done in a certain location. And as Paul and Barnabas went out and they started churches all everywhere they went. That's right. And then those churches started churches. Well, the gospel moved quickly through that church planning movement. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed reading y'all's letter from Brazil. And it said, uh, you know, I've, I've got it here in my notebook, but, uh, you know, about, they had 100 people in the congregation. Man, that was exciting. You know, to see those souls saved and people gathered together. And to see people saved here. And I love reading the letters, you know, from here. And, and hearing what God has done, and, and really, He ought to get the glory for it. That's right. Amen. He ought to get the glory for it. Because when we, get, when we begin to think, oh man, look what we've done, that's when we get in trouble. That's right. That's right. Fair enough. My uh, oldest son, he was, he was four, somewhere right in there. And uh, one of our customs uh, back in Kentucky with Angie's dad, he'd take us out shooting guns as the men of the family. You know, that's just what you do when you get together. It's being right, you know, one of the best smells in the world is an empty shotgun shell. You know, just, man, that, <laughs> nothing like it. You know, just, just awesome. I love it, you know. And uh, anyways, we were out there, you know, shooting some uh, some skeet and such like that, you know, and then just target uh, practice a little bit. Well, Ty was way too little to shoot a 12-gauge, you know, at that point, you know, and knock him down. So he had one of those little BB guns, little black BB guns. You pull the lever back and then push it forward and it just basically spits a little BB out. You know, it just barely gets out of the barrel. 
So Angie's dad, <coughs> Brother Decker, said, uh, here's what we'll do. Uh, you have Tyler focus on that target over there, and about the time he pulls the trigger on that, uh, that BB gun, then I'll, I'll pull the trigger on this 12-gauge shotgun. And so I said, all right, Tyler, you ready? Ready? Aim, fire, boom! That thing went off. He looked at that BB gun like that. <laughs> Man, that's big stuff right there. Uh, it wasn't that gun that made that sound. It was that 12-gauge, right? You know, uh, when I started preaching, um, I was 15, and uh, preach at some retirement centers, you know. It's a great place for a young man to learn to preach. You know, at least you have to lift up your voice, right? <laughs> preach up, preach out. Well, I'd have those dear ladies come by and say, that was so good, honey. That was the best sermon I've ever heard, you know, or something like that. And, and I don't know who all they said that to, but man, they thought, they made me think, oh, wow, that's great, you know. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Along the way, I, you know, I had to learn sometimes the hard way. Uh, God can do this very much without you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know. We need to keep in mind, we're just ordinary people. That's right. But God's wanting to do some extraordinary things in our day and time. And I, I just thank God for the Bob and Caleb Williams of the world who are just willing to be who they are and go where God sends them, anywhere, as long as he goes with us. You know? And I, I don't want to forget that order. He called them to be with him, and then he sent them out. I think about Daniel. Um, Daniel may be in his 80s by the time he wrote Daniel. You know, he's looking back on his uh, days. Now this Daniel's 18 right now. Right, right now it's 18. Um, but Bob, you just, you just turned 80, didn't you? March. March. Just turned 80. I think like that, I'll be there, right? Is that that's how this thing's going to go? Next week, it'll be 90, probably. <laughs> <laughs> it won't buy fast. It goes by fast. It really does. And you know, I'll be married 25 years next year. Praise the Lord. This goes so fast. 39 years. 39. 39. Man. Daniel's 80. And he's looking back on what God did. You know why he did that? by the way, and, and you know why the book of Acts is written? Is to remind us God's not done doing His work. That's right. We're still on this earth. We still have breath and life and opportunity. God still wants to use you. You know? And, um, and just like the book of Acts is inspiring another generation to serve the Lord and trust Him, Daniel was trying to inspire that generation. They had a lot of work ahead of them, didn't they? coming back to rebuild the walls and coming back to reestablish the worship in the temple and all that. My soul. Well, would you agree with this? we got a lot of work to do right now. That's right. Lots. A lot of people moving right here into this area. That, I mean, sometimes temporary. You know, just people in and out. I always stayed in what's the town? Did I say? Is that pretty good? <laughs> yeah. Uh, my soul, that place was crowded. I had no idea. Yeah. You know, um, Texas is moving up here to Oklahoma. That's right. <laughs> you, the mission field is coming to you, right? <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of work to do. There's a lot of work to do in Oklahoma City. There's a lot of work to do around the world. And just like Daniel was saying, there's a lot of work to do. Let me, let me encourage you. Be faithful to God. You know, what I learned from men like Daniel and men like Paul and Barnabas, they're looking back and they're saying, listen, be faithful to God and watch what he does through you. What I learned from the Harrisons in Southwest and the Williams that were sent out from Southwest, I mean, just mention 50 years, and, and my soul, that ought to inspire you to see that, you know, God's been faithful mm -hmm. to His people. And, and a new, another generation needs to learn to trust the Lord in their generation. And the reason being is this, is that we're all in danger of drifting away from what God wants us to do. Right. Every one of us. It's so easy, isn't it? Yeah, it's Folks, so it's easy to drift away from God. You know, you don't realize how strong the current is until you start going against it. You know, I used to do a lot of canoeing in Kentucky and then did a little bit of canoeing here. I, I'll tell you just one real, real quick story. Uh, we went on vacation in southern...
Missouri. This was many years ago, and again, Tyler, he was probably about three, I guess. And he was in the front of the canoe, I'm in the back of the canoe. You know, the back of the canoe is really where you get the power. <laughs> so he was no help up there, you know, I guess, <laughs> right? And you could either pay somebody to let them put you in a bus and go up the stream and then you float back down, or you could just pay there at the place you're staying, you could just float around wherever you wanted to go. I thought, well, I'm, I'm cheap, I'm just going to float around here, it's going to be half the price, you know? And, and so I tried to navigate my way upstream, you know? And man, I didn't realize how strong that current was until it started going against it. We'd go, you know, cross the river because it would bend and we'd lose ground and then we'd gain ground. Well, it took us about an hour to get upstream. It took us about 15 minutes to get back down, you know, if that. Um, well, we're going upstream. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about society, right? in society. Mm -hmm. we're, we're going upstream. We are. This church is going upstream, you know. The way God used Williams is going upstream. This is <clears throat> it's not common. It's not easy. But Davidson always said, if it's easy, second grade girls will be doing it. You know? <laughs> it's not easy. We're, we're going against the, we're going against the flow, <clears throat> going against the culture, going against society. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> another reason this is needed is that um, we're being targeted. You know. Uh, the enemy wants to wants to take us out of the way, you know. And um, what you think about, I was talking about Daniel, but you think about Paul and Barnabas and, and the churches there. When you say that, I mean, there was a great opposition <clears throat> that was going on then. And there's great opposition that's going on today. And uh, someone said that an enemy is anyone who tries to change your allegiance. And that's what they were trying to do in the life of Daniel and the others trying to change their allegiance away from God towards, well, in that case, Nebuchadnezzar, you know. And I'll tell you what was targeted here. <clears throat> the youth and their worship, you know, because they got those young men away from the older men. Yep. And um, I'm thankful for men in my life that have been older than I so I can learn from them. Mm -hmm. And ladies, too, mm -hmm. you know. Person that's had a big influence in my life is a man named Bob Carson. Bob Carson is 102 years old now. Wow. He fought in World War II, <clears throat> and um, he's still going to church. And I saw him just about a month ago in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Well, every every Saturday night we'd have our men's prayer meeting, and I'd have the privilege of kneeling and praying and listening to Brother Bob Carson pray and talk to him. My soul that helped me as a 15 year old. You know, the older generation is supposed to inspire the younger generation. And uh, I'm glad that that's gone on here, you know, in uh, so many ways. But, um, but then, then finally here um, would be this. Let, let's treat this extraordinary assembly as it is, just that. And then let's not get in our minds that we're anything extraordinary, but let's keep in our minds that He is. That's right. Because serving Him is ten times better. Mm -hmm. yeah. You think about the... The time that Nebuchadnezzar had Daniel and Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah stand before him. And he said, you know, these right here, they're ten times better. You know, I think it could be said of the churches that were started by Paul and Barnabas under the right authority, they were ten times better, you know. And I, I'd say of this, in serving the Lord, it's ten times better. That's right. It's so much better to serve the Lord rather than to serve yourself. Um, how about this? Marriage God's way? Ten times better. Yep. Church God's way? Yep. I'm giving it a ten. <laughs> Finances God's way? Ten times better. You know, parenting God's way? It's not easy, but it's ten times better. <laughs> That's right. I mean, on and on, you know, it's just ten times better. So I just want to thank God today for what we get to be a part of. Amen. And the extraordinary work that He's doing through just ordinary people. Amen. Now, let's not get in our minds that we're anything. Uh, but let's keep in our minds that He is everything. That's right. Yeah. And so today, for the Bob and Ms. Calla, part of our effort is just to say, thanks be to God for what He's done. And your life and your life has been an inspiration to us. Yeah. Amen. So let's pray. Father, I want to thank you for this Sunday school hour. And, and as we have some time to fellowship and get around and greet one another, I pray that you bless that time. And then also the service, Lord, we look forward 
uh, to the opportunity to open up your word and try to preach your word here this morning. And so God, I pray that you'd use the day. Lord, I know that even as I'm <clears throat> saying some things about the Williams, Lord, I know that they would say all the glory be to you. And, and uh, Lord, I just, I just sincerely want to thank you for what you've done in all the churches that have been started. These extraordinary assemblies, Lord, uh, that God point others to you. And God, the family life that you've given them, and Lord, it's an inspiration to all of us, Lord, in, in uh, seeing their family serve you. And <clears throat> So God, I pray for the dear folks here. I pray for Brother Joseph and his family, and that you'd strengthen him and help them. Dear Lord, and thank you for their faithfulness, and just pray that you'd use the Choctaw Baptist Church, Lord, in many years to come, and, and both here as well as in Swink and other places, oh God. Uh, Lord, help us right here in Oklahoma to see souls saved and, and uh, baptized, and then churches started as a result. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.